Welcome back, everybody, uh, to my second bite-sized movie review. Um, like I said in the previous video, my Get Out review, I'm going to start doing uh, this series of videos where um, if I watch a TV show or a movie, um, if I don't do a long-form like review or essay on it, um, I'm going to do a review about it. I want to try to keep consistent videos coming out um, in terms of thought pieces, even if I'm not able to make something large. It'll keep me active um, and uh, kind of keep me on my toes. Plus, the, these past few movies I have seen um, have been, I realized I did not add Jumanji to my recently watched list. I'm not going to make a video about the new Jumanji, but I did like the new Jumanji, actually. I thought it was better than the original Jumanji. Anyway, um, I'm doing a video here about uh, Straw Dogs. The 1971 Sam Peckinpah film with Dustin Hoffman. I loved this movie immensely. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a spoiler review of Straw Dogs. Very brief, probably five to ten minutes, uh, if I can keep it that short. Um, like I said, just trying to talk about all the stuff that I watch. Um, and since I felt like talking about this one, I felt like talking about Get Out, mo mostly Get Out, because my Get Out opinion seems really, really, really not popular. Um, I don't mean like people hate my opinion, it's just my opinion is not the one that everyone else has. Um, so I made that video. Uh, that's the one before this one if you want to watch that, but this this is Straw Dogs um, This is 1971 Sam Peckinpah film Peckinpah film. I wanted to watch it for a while um, 1971 was a pretty controversial Year for movies because uh, you had Straw Dogs um, with a very controversial rape scene pretty violent climax Clockwork Orange um, very controversial movie uh, for its time even now um, with some rape scenes and some violence, um, fair amount of nudity, and Dirty Harry, uh, which I have not seen fully, and I don't quite remember what the subject matter was in it, but apparently that one was also a pretty big uh, controversial movie for 1971 as well. So um, I don't remember how I came across this movie, but it said on Rotten Tomatoes, I'd never heard of it before, looked it up on Rotten Tomatoes, 91%, 32 Fresh, 3 Rotten, a violent, provocative meditation on manhood with some of the most controversial scenes ever shot for a mainstream movie. And, um, and then I heard it had a rape scene in it, and then I was like, yay, I'll what? <laughs> that sounds bad. Uh, I heard there was a, a rape scene in it after that, and I'm, I'm always interested to watch controversial movies, because I want to see if the controversy is warranted or not, um, I find that very engaging. Um, also, it's making me, it's bugging me that that thing is visible behind. It's a little bigger. Oh gosh, what have, what have I done? What have I done? Um, I like to see if controversy is warranted. Because um, usually controversial things have really interesting things to say. <coughs> like, regardless of how con controversial it was, I loved the message in Clockwork Orange. Um, it was very complicated, very nuanced, and I mean, Clockwork Orange is my fifth favorite film of all time. But um, sometimes it's, it's it's not good, and it's just there for the sake of being there, which I would say is the case in movies like Caligula, Caligula or something like that, where it's just subject matter for the sake of subject matter, and I, I think that's kind of stupid and benign. Um, so I heard about this movie and that there was a controversy, and um, I'm like, I'm, I want to watch this. I want to see what's up. This looks interesting. <coughs> um, I didn't know a whole lot about it going in. Um, I kind of knew that it was about, like, this guy who has a wife who gets raped and his retaliation. But not, it doesn't work quite like that in the movie, but that's kind of the gist I got. I'm like, okay, I want to see this. Um... I love this movie. I love Sam Peckinpah's editing. Um, I don't know if he uses the same editors or if he's he's involved with the process or not, um, but his canted shots and his quick editing <clears throat> between past and present scenes is brilliant. And it really, 
evokes the mood for you visually. It puts you in the place of these characters who are feeling these different things, and it's perfect. Um, the the culmination of all the events, I think, is really good. Um, I'll, I'll make I'll say a quick thing about the rape scene because it's the most controversial part of the movie. <clears throat> Um, not as controversial as uh, Clockwork Orange, mind you. Um, after the rape scene was done, I was like, Clockwork Orange was, was certainly worse. Um, if you have that, you know... Not, I mean, if you've seen the movie, so I'm, I'm not... This is spoilers, so you've, you've seen both. So I was going to say, if you had reservations watching this movie, no, it's not as bad as Clockwork Orange. Um, so, the rape scene... Um, I think it was very nuanced, very interesting, and it served a very good purpose in the story. Um, it really showcased the complexity of the character of Amy, I think, um, which really sh showed its teeth in the cult climax, um, which, I mean, that's really all I need to talk about is the climax. Um, <coughs> I would say that the there's a few things I would critique, I think it's kind of weird that the slow uh, David Warner character, I don't forget his name, Neil, um, choked that woman to death accidentally, and it took like five seconds. Um, it could have just been editing. But I think that could have been done a little bit better, a little bit differently. Small nitpick. And then I think the set design of the house and the props that they use in the final climax could have been done a tiny, tiny bit differently. I really love the way it is now, um, but I think it could have been even slightly better if they had kind of turned up um, the perfection of crafting that climax, but very small nitpicks. Um, I mostly have nothing but praise uh, for this movie. The climax. Brilliant, 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 brilliant character study for the character of David Sumner. Dustin Hoffman's character. Dustin Hoffman kicks it out of the park. Wow. Um, it's this guy who escaped the U.S. because he felt um, cornered or afraid or just his ideas were too fringe. I don't remember quite what it was, but he just felt like escaping because he couldn't handle the pressure. And... Now he comes back to his ex, his wife's old nesting ground, if you will. Her ex-boyfriend lives in this village. Um, and it's really complicated. And these people feel like this wimp has come into their village and married one of their own, and they don't like it. Um, so things just continue to escalate as, as these people mock these two, this married couple, especially uh, Dustin Hoffman. Um, and Dustin, uh, I should say David, David does a horrible job at retaliating. He's m very much a wimp. He's super bad at confrontation. If anything, when he needs to confront these guys after they kill their cat, he can't do it and instead agrees to go shooting birds with them. Gives them beer. Um... <laughs> He, he has this... I, I, I related so well to that. Um, I have a hard time bringing up problems with people and instead will openly cultivate the friendship that might be there while that stuff, that bad stuff is still fresh. Um, I thought that, that was something I could relate to so well. But then uh, the rape happens and his wife is distraught and they go to the, the church thing, and um, <clears throat> little girl gets killed, and they take Neil back to the house. Um, this climax is so good, because it's this guy who doesn't know how to deal with a home invasion. He doesn't know how to handle it. He's like, they'll go away, they'll go away, just go upstairs, go upstairs, just go upstairs, I'll, they'll, they'll, I'll take care of it, it's fine. Um, you can tell this is a guy who's kind of breaking down inside. He's like, I don't know what to do. I'm scared. I don't want my wife to get injured, but I have to treat this like it's a normal thing. Um, and then there's the moment where he just, he breaks and he's like, okay, we need to do this. And all the while Amy is warring with this thing where it's like, 
I, I was raped by my ex-boyfriend, but it started to get sort of consensual. Um, I was, I've was i been disillusioned with my marriage with my husband because he's so focused on just trying to work. Um, that I just like, just let them have Neil. Let them have the guy who killed that girl on accident. Um, and David's like, no, are you kidding me? I, I care. You don't care? I care. And back and forth, he's like, Amy switches sides, like here and there. Um, she's, she sides with her ex-boyfriend, like, just let them, like, I'll, I'll come, I'll let you in, Charlie. And then David's like, no. And he like, like very subtly manages to convince her. And it's like so great because it's like such a married couple thing that happens between these two actors. Um, and then by the very end, um, you know, she shoots the guy who's trying to break his back or whatever. And, um, and it's like, it's all over. And he's he's won. He's gotten all the people. He takes Neil to the to the doctor. Neil says, um, "I don't I don't know my way home." And uh, Dustin Hoffman's like, "That's okay. I don't either." And it's so it's such a cool character transition because you see this territorial and very defensive animalistic side come out of a very meek guy a very timid wimpy guy um and it's so great because this real life very visceral thing that happens is a mirroring of what brought him to the uk in the first place um he was trying to escape he couldn't handle the pressure he couldn't face these people so he fled and when it came down to it in a very different way, he stood his ground. Um, I will not allow violence against this house. Um, brilliant. Brilliant. Um, some might say the violence is a uh, tad, you know, bad taste. I would say no, because in moments like this, the violence serves as like a very visceral way to channel these feelings. Um, you know, where it's like slamming a bear trap on a guy's head is it's not like celebrating that this guy is dead it's celebrating that he has been defeated in this very very extreme way um which is what you want because this is a guy who set up a lot of extreme uh retaliation and opposition to the protagonist the whole movie and now he's finally been defeated in a way that matches everything he's done to these people that's that's what i take from the violence and i think in that way it's very effective um also, the one of the producers of Home Alone, Home Alone production designer John Muto, identified that this film uh, identified Home Alone as a kids' version of Straw Dogs, um, which I think is fantastic because th this is a movie where he needs to protect his home when he has no weapons. Um, so what does he do? He takes pots of oil, puts them on the stove, throws them on their faces, um, gets, you know, pokers from the fire, uh, gets wire and wraps, you know, their hand around the the windowsill so they can't move and the glass is right there. It's that that specific moment is what I mean by like things that could have been tweaked. Like that's a little weird, the wire on the, the windowsill, the door window frame. Um it was a little bizarre and a little too unique and specific. Uh, but, man, absolutely fantastic. Um, again, I, I went like three, four minutes over what I wanted to. Um, great movie. Great movie. Um, I loved it a lot. First Sam Peckinpah movie I've seen fully. Um, I watched like half of The Wild Bunch like three or four years ago, and I never finished it, and I really want to. Because um, I'm coming to really like what Sam Peckinpah does. He's very visceral, very in your face, um, flashy, but not in a stylish way, in an editing way. And I, I think that that's really bold. Um, so yeah, Straw Dogs was great. Highly recommend it. Um, so like I said in my Get Out video, um, I'm planning on doing uh, Call Me By Your Name. I wanna catch up on all of the Oscar movies, I want to see Call Me By Your Name next. I want to see Dunkirk after that. I want to see Phantom Thread in theaters, but I don't know if it's going to play here, so, I mean, we'll see. Um, 
Shape of Water I'm interested in. Billboards I probably will see. Lady Bird I'm kind of interested in. Don't care about The Post. Don't care about Darkest Hour. So about four or so movies that I'll be seeing um, coming up. Uh, I, Tanya, the Tanya Harding movie. I'm interested in that. I'll, I'll see that at some point. Um, but yeah, I want to keep up with these. I want to keep making these, uh, keep putting these out every time I see a movie. Um, so let me know in the comments uh, if you guys have seen this movie, what you think of it. If you have movie recommendations, um, I probably won't take movie recommendations for like, hey, you should see Star Wars or you should see whatever is in theaters right now. Um, I'm more interested in movies that kind of slip under the radar. I did a video on Sleuth, which is my third favorite film of all time. Um, if you haven't seen that, go check it out. I don't know, maybe I can put up a card or the thing that goes right here, like, check out Sleuth. <coughs> um, I really love that movie, and it was like an under-the-radar subculture kind of movie. Um, was at the bottom of the IMDb Top 250 for a while, and never got talked about, but I saw it, and I'm like, ooh, these actors, ooh, this plot synopsis, I want to see it, and then I loved it. Um, Straw Dogs is another movie like that, where it's just one that kind of slips under the radar, and really the only people who see it are the ones who are interested based solely on what it is, like director, actors, plot synopsis, maybe, um, you know, who composed the score, things like that. That's what really gets me interested in movies, is like a good narrative and good director, good uh, actors. Like I got uh, a movie waiting that I'm waiting to see called The Children's Hour, I believe it is, and I only got it because um, it has Shirley MacLaine and Audrey Hepburn in it, and I've never seen those two in a movie together, and they seem like a really fascinating combo to me. So I, I only watching that movie, going to watch that movie because Shirley MacLaine and Audrey Hepburn are in it. I think it's going to be an interesting pair. Um, it's the same reason I love the Shanghai movies so much. Like I love Shanghai Noon and Shanghai Nights, even though they're not great movies, just because it's Jackie Chan and Owen Wilson. Like that seems like an idea someone would have when they're high. It's like, oh, it's Jackie Chan. It'll be the martial arts guy. Okay, who's going to be the cowboy? Owen Wilson. You know that guy from Bottle Rocket and Royal Tenenbaums? He's the cowboy. And I just, I, I applaud that kind of thinking. So if anyone does have movie recommendations, I would like movies that are kind of less well-known. I mean, like, I would say Straw Dogs isn't an unknown movie. It has its, you know, fair following. People know it. But it doesn't get talked about. So I want movies recommended to me that people that don't, doesn't get talked about um but are kind of in that in that vein of thinking you know um in that that style that mindset um just really really interesting concepts and people involved um that's what i like so if you have anything like that uh let me know in the comments and i'll, I'll check it out I'll, if it and if it if it jives with me i'll like all right well i'll look it up i'll watch it um so that's it I think this went on longer than my Get Out video because of the last preamble, whatever. Thank you. Um, again, comment, do your thing. Thank you for watching.